Robert Kiyosaki said buying a home is not an asset but a liability. Wait, who is Robert Kiyosaki and how did he say that buying a home is a liability? Relax bro, relax. So Robert Kiyosaki is an American businessman and real estate investor that invested in thousands of properties across the globe. And he's also the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad and other 26 books. Oh wow, but why did he say that buying a home is a liability and how and he bought like over thousands of properties across the globe? Means all of them liability lah. Ah, this is where the theory gets a little tricky. That's where the difference between buying a home and investment property comes in. In today's video, we are going to explain to you why your home is a liability and why you should consider three of the following questions before purchasing a home. What's up everybody, welcome to BC where we talk about real estate, business and mindset. My name is Vincent. And I'm Chloe. So why did Robert Kiyosaki mention that buying a home is not an asset? First, we need to understand the definition of an asset. An asset is something that provides a current, future or potential economic benefit for an individual or other entity. He also mentioned real estate for investment purposes that puts money in your pocket each month in the form of rent is an asset. Yep, many people choose to buy their own house because they believe that they are buying their own equity, which means they are not building the landlord's wealth while having their own home increase in value, right? But that's where things fall apart. Buying a home requires you to pay the mortgage loan every single month, taking out money from your pocket, not putting into your pocket, which means that it's reducing your monthly cash flow. Now, this is not an asset but liability. Also, buying a property for own stay requires capital and costs such as a down payment of 10% if you are owning less than 3 properties in Malaysia, legal fees, stamp duty, insurance, management fees, renovation fees, and other overhead costs and these will definitely put on stress onto your financial situation, especially cash flow, unless you're super rich and balling every single day. Perhaps you won't be watching this video anyways. <laughs> yeah. As a conclusion, why Robert Kiyosaki said home is a liability and we think that it makes sense in terms of building wealth. It requires people to put money in their pocket but not you working harder and harder to pay off the monthly mortgage payment while suffering from financial stress. Although you can live in that house, wait for the property to increase in value and sell it while earning the capital gain, yes you can do so. But most of the time, either you're upgrading to an even bigger house or downsizing into a smaller one, yet you've already burned your money on unrecoverable costs such as renovation fees. Right? Yep, if you're buying a property for your own state, it means that you're planning to settle down in a particular area, right? This is where you should start considering three of these questions before making a final decision. First of all is the current planning. In today's era, the chance of you staying in a single company for 20 to 30 years is no longer common like your grandparents or your parents' era. Perhaps you're looking for a company that provides you a higher salary or because of the toxic environment or even your manager cursing you as a useless piece of sh and you decide to quit your job instead. Right? Yeah, so nobody can 100% confirm that you'll be staying in the same company for a very long time. Or you can even changing the industry that you're in after 10 years of working as a bartender while learning high income skills and becoming a marketing manager for example in the near future. We never know what's going to happen in the future. Yes, exactly. You might potentially switch jobs or careers and be forced to move into another part of the city or even completely move into another state to work for another company. Meanwhile, you're forced to move while still continuing to pay the mortgage installment on a monthly basis. Yep, this is why career planning is one of the main considerations for people like you that are still young, currently hustling, working hard for your future and potentially getting a higher pay raise in the under company that requires you to move out from your city to another city. But the property that you have bought becoming one of the reasons that putting you the financial stress down the road. Yes, in our opinion, if you're considering purchasing a property for your own stay purpose in the early stage in life, make sure that the rental in that area is able to cover at least 80% of the monthly installment for the property. This could minimize the risk of you falling into financial difficulty in the future. Yep, the second consideration that you should pay attention to is your family planning. 
environment. How many kids are you going to have? Any specific school that you're planning to send them to? The environment that you hope to provide to your kids, such as a bigger space, for example, for them to run around, the safety of the environment, or even facility that can enhance the quality of their childhoods, for example. Yes, let's take buying a car as an example. Unless you're living very close to public transport or to your workplace, having a car in Malaysia is sort of a necessity. You know that in Malaysia, without a car, it would be very inconvenient and troublesome sometimes. It provides a lot of convenience and saving time on a daily basis unless you're planning to grab every single day that is different lah. yeah when you're starting up to step into society to kickstart your career having a basic working car would be the only consideration right as long as it's healthy and can bring you from point A to point B so that would be awesome my own Malaysia legendary car the Maybe or even the second hand car would be sufficient for you to drive around to grocery meeting friends especially to work right yep after working for a couple of years, having some savings and plannings to purchase a better car, you would much prefer the quality of life for your own, compensating for the amount of stress from work and rewarding yourself at this stage of your life. Going for a higher priced car to enhance your driving quality and status as your daily driver. Sounds familiar? <laughs> yes sir. Now, later in the stage of life that you have a family, your priority switches from your personal happiness to the practicality and safety for your family in the car, which you would be starting to consider spacious, maybe four-seaters or perhaps the car is full of airbags for example, to ensure your family's safety and also ability to feed your kids and your grandparents or in-laws. This doesn't mean that you're old, lah. it means that you're more mature and your family means more than everything, right? You love your family, right? Yes, exactly. This simple example defines different stages of your life. Your perspective in life changes, your car will be upgraded, hobbies will be changed, job would be changed. How about your property needs? How many kids will you be having in the future? Would your parents or in-laws will be living with you? How about the environment and safety for your kids? The older you get, the more things will be changed, right? The two-bedroom unit that you bought could no longer fit three of your kids as they grew up and things that you have collected year by year is getting more and more and the amount of space is getting an issue. Right. These are the questions that you should consider before making a decision of committing to a 35 years loan. It means one wrong step of decision will cost you into financial difficulty for the next 35 years. That's suffering as hell, bro. Yep, exactly. So you might be asking, Hey, I can sell it off, man, right? Buy a bigger one, man. I can refinance and get a bigger one, man, right? I can rent this out also, man, right? Yes, of course you can. Lah. That's why you need to be sure that things that you consider beforehand and especially you have to understand the market. You're only able to sell it when the economy is good and so you don't lose the property's value and have to make sure that the renter is able to cover the installment when you're planning to move out and rent it out this property. Don't forget that buying a second home before renting out your unit, you'll also find it more difficult to loan for another one as your home affects your DSR for you to acquire a bigger unit unless you've made it in life earning enormous amount of money in your 20s and 30s. If you still don't understand what is DSR, the debt service ratio, you can check out our video how DSR can affect your loan eligibility, link in the description down below. So now after you sort out your career, your family planning, one last thing that you should consider is for your retirement planning. This is something very subjective lah. Everyone's retirement plan is different. Whether you're planning to stay in the city you're in or you're planning to move out into another more peaceful and quiet town to enjoy the rest of your life, it's all up to you. But home is home. You'll definitely spend a ton of money of renovation, a bigger space, and make yourself feel that you've succeeded and rewarded all of the hardship, right? Yeah, by the time when you already made it in life, you can choose wherever you want to live, right? Even though if you, if you want to go travel for a couple of months and come back still having a place called home, right? Of course, that's why different stages in life have different needs, which considering purchasing your first home that assuming that you'll be living there forever would be too rushed to make an emotional decision. Yes, you don't want to make the wrong move while being unable to retire earlier, reaching the goal that you've set and potentially suffering your financial loss while you're already working super hard in life, right? Therefore, make the informed decision in early stage of life to prevent risking you or your family and your future. Yep, in conclusion, we hope that you'll be starting to consider these three phases in life before making the decision of buying a fancy house early on in life. If you insist on purchasing a home early on in life, of course you can, nah, not that you cannot, right? But make sure that you have done your homework and understand what you really, really want. 
Yes. Also, don't forget to check on the rental in your area, even if you're purchasing as your own stay, as your own home. This will prevent the unforeseeable situations in the future if you're forced to change your job in the future and also have to drive three to four hours every single day or even warning to another city in your career. Now, there you go, folks. Hope today's video may clarify your decision on purchasing an asset or a liability. Make an informed decision and understand your needs, not placing a booking fee directly to the salesperson when they say that this property has 180 facility in this building. Fancy, yeah, make it look rich. Wow, 180 facilities. You're living in that entire park, da? Who knows, right? Well, if you're currently considering to purchase a property but not sure where should you start, feel free to contact us down below in the last link in the description and we will get back to you real quick to help you out. Yep, if you're considering whether you should buy or rent a property or just generally looking for any other property related videos, check out the video right here and we have linked it down in the description below just in case you've missed it. And we'll see you on, on the, the other side. side. Ciao! Bye.